Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, you guys, we are in Brookville, Ohio at Lori's Antique Depot. Obviously, we've never been here before. You are, I've never been here before. We've never been here before. We're gonna get inside, see what we can't find. The folks over at Black Road Antique Mall, I'll drop an iCard right there for you so you can check out that video. Recommended coming over here. Some great folks inside. So uh, let's see what we can find. Here we go. A shot of the exterior where the old is sold. I guess this is the entrance. So let's get up here. Okay. All right, guys, let's do this. Alrighty guys, here we go on the interior. Now you are first greeted with a number of different cabinets. Oh, and you will yeah, see some yeah, absolutely yeah, beautiful definitely. mantel clocks there along the top. Yeah, they oh were quite gorgeous. Um, some absolutely amazing. I love this one over here. It's very Greek revival, kind of like very Pantheon feel to it. It did look like it was a three piece. And of course we're checking out all of the other mantle clocks here a lot of them are the have the marble inserts and we do of course have some wood i love the spelter ones here they're very ornate and of course the clocks are for display only so these are look but don't touch <laughs> or buy for that matter love the pendulum on that one there okay so let's check out the cases here a little bit more we do have this beautiful mid-century brandy snifter here i've seen this piece before this one's at 48 it's not uh terrible it's actually the lowest price that i've seen on that particular piece i love it we go from those very ornate clocks right up top to the, to the little kitschy pieces here we've got the napco angel and of course the anthropomorphic salt and pepper shakers here we've got two little flower girls are absolutely adorable. $20, that's really good for a collector. Um, I don't, you know, I think there would still be some money on those, but it was a little at the higher end, so I did hold off on those. This was a great piece, the three koi here. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting. I love that white high glaze to it. Checking out the other stuff here in the cabinets, the little skeleton the skull match holder. He is cute. He's definitely seen some things. He's had a life, that is for sure. And then we pop over here, a little bit of the art glass mm. and some pottery. We've got a whole lot of the jade down here. I love the native uh, chalkware. I actually had uh, the boy. I sold him. I have never seen the female before. Look at this hippo. It says hand carved hippo. That's a grumpy looking hippo. Uh, very 1800s, almost 1700s looks to him. He's got a very, um, if I would even say before that, very prehistoric look to him. Pinocchio, my one of my favorite, or probably my favorite Disney movie. Here we are checking out the overall. Now this is just the first floor and there is an additional room which we will get to, as well as a basement that you will see right here. Nothing creepy about that at all. Very Blair Witch. We've got dolls, $3 each, two for 10. Now it is the smaller ones. Obviously the other ones here priced individually, $12 for the head. I kind of regret not getting her. This little cloth doll here with the China head, absolutely adorable, priced at 35. The little lenticulated monkeys there. He's cute. Checking out some more cabinets here, obviously. A whole lot of the tiny treasures. Oh, I actually didn't notice that. The vendor has these priced by shelf. So get a $5 shelf there. That's that's really interesting. That saves a lot of time um, and a lot of headache so far as pricing things, but also it makes it a lot easier for, I think, a customer. If you can say, oh, everything on the shelf is $5. I mean, how easy is that? I really like that idea. Love the little hutch here. Very ornate. And then I did spot these ewers over here. Uh, it was in a Van Briggle style, and I was shocked to see that they were, in fact, Van Briggle in the Ming glaze. Didn't know uh, that Van Briggle made that, that particular piece there, so that was cool to see. And, of course, it is a matching set, but they were priced individually. Got some furniture and the student lamp there, but mm, just not the area that I am looking for. Got some more of the primitive stuff here. I like the fact that you can kind of see the entirety of the mall versus having the the uh the walls go all the way up i think it has a much more open air feel to it 
You don't feel as claustrophobic. Got a little hutch in here. Of course, we're going to peek in here just to make sure that we don't miss anything. And moving right along. Don't spot a whole lot of anything for me. Then I did see this tiny little shelf, and I did see some Leo Ward birds. Not bad, but I did see the Cardinal in here, and I was very excited by that. Um, I've really tried to limit the Bluebird of Happiness buying. However, the colored ones definitely are a little bit more in demand. And of course, this one is signed. And then I was like, but is this the flashed glass? And guess what? It turns out, even though the camera's having a very difficult time focusing, or pardon me, Ron Ray, uh, that this is a flashed glass bird. There is a little scratch to the paint that I do notice. And um, it, it's, it's difficult to see because it, it is done so well. But right here where my thumb is, there's a little chip to the paint. Yep, and it's revealing that it is, in fact, flash glass. So do keep that in mind. And another good way to tell is hold it up to the light. There you go. You can see there on the base. This was really interesting. We do have an official Warner Brothers product here. It's Bugs Bunny in a crystal uh, little candy dish, if you will. Uh, that was interesting. Here we do have the Westmoreland, the amber glass, the nesting lion here. I love this piece. This one priced very reasonably. I believe it was at $40. Yep. Yeah. Uh, typically they go for 60 plus. So there was some room on that, uh, but it was a little close on that. It's such a specific look that I did decide to go ahead and hold off on that one. And we do, of course, have a little three footed bull here. They have it marked as Northwood. Uh, there are so many antique glass patterns and manufacturers that it is difficult to keep them all straight. $25, that wasn't the world's worst, um, but I probably, if it was like at 10, I probably would have picked that one up. We do, of course, have our St. Clair paperweights and art glass here. These are really pretty, $15, really not that bad, but unfortunately, I did spot a little chip on it. This was cute. It did match the perfume bottle. Uh, the perfume bottle was only at 25 but again, there was a small chip to it. It looks like something hit it. Um, so I did hold off on getting that one. Yeah, there you can see like a hole in it. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting, but that is definitely a no-go on that one. Now we did, of course, spot some pieces. So of course, my interest is intrigued and I want to see what else that we've got in the booth here. Some little cassettes. Oh, I love it. I spotted a little tiny Tim, little Royal Dalton figurine here. I think a lot of you are very familiar with it. They did do a huge collection of the Charles Dickinson characters. I love him. I think that he's really cute. I love the smaller figurines that are character spe specific. So cool to see, but just not where I needed it to be for resale. Now we do spot some antique books there, and we are going to come back to that. However, I, of course, did spot some glass, and I don't really know how I feel about that. It, it's a look. That is for sure. Um, I guess the more the merrier was the idea behind that makeup look. <laughs> of course, some beautiful blue opalescent, but there was a chip on it. So I said no. This about this uh, pretty little uh, pottery vase here. It's a reminiscent of the 1900s, the Welsa Rookwood. They did those glazes, but it's kind of like an... Um, a knockoff piece if you will now this piece definitely caught my eye look at that purple luster glaze to it turns out that it is a royal saxony uh, 1800s uh, porcelain and ceramics maker the glaze is really unusual i didn't know how i felt about the 25 dollars, so i did set it back uh, and going back circling back to those antique books now we do have some atlases this one was priced at 40 dollars um i love that look at that 1922 it looks like an old film in there i love the sapia tone in there now i think it's really good good it's got some uh foxing so it was exposed to some moisture at some point but overall really good condition i just didn't know if the subject matter would be popular enough uh, especially at the 40 dollars price point now, we do here have a world atlas or a popular atlas of the world. Condition was fair. Uh, I love the script in this one. And again, those hand drawings, I think, are beautiful. Uh, we do have a lot of U.S. maps here, Ohio. Uh, like I said, the condition was fair. So at the price point, I did decide to go ahead and leave this one behind. But I definitely thought that it was worth a closer inspection. 
So cool to see, but they're going to have to live there. Now, this vendor definitely was maximizing their space with that curio hutch or the little cubbies back here. They've got quite a few things in there, and it runs from contemporary to antique. For example, we do, of course, do have the two apothecary jars. I didn't know if the label was original to it. Um, you see there on the side, it looks like at one time there would have been something different. Now, they have it marked at $95. It does have a ground stop to it. But those labels really just kind of had me questioning the authenticity. Uh, not to say that that's bad. I do believe that the bottles were original. Just don't know how I feel about those new or newish labels on them. We've got some reproduction Art Nouveau tiles. These are beautiful. I think this is great. Now, those were made to be decorative. I do know you can go into Etsy, and there is a number of different artisans out there that do make reproduction tiles that can actually be used on walls, on fireplaces. Um, so if you kind of want that antique look without having to pay an arm and a leg per tile, definitely check that out. Now here we do have, this is a Murano glass piece. I absolutely love the combination of this green and blue. I had actually gotten a faceted base before uh, that did really well. Now I think this is a beautiful piece and it's a great uh, price for a collector, but just not a, of course where I need it to be. Talking about unusual subject matter, Alvin, I've never heard of this manufacturer before. This thing was massive and heavy, $49. It was cute, but again, just not where I need it to be. But gosh darn it, I think that was really, really unique. Now, talking about unique, we've got this piece here. We obviously have a clear glass, free form, kind of modernistic and impressionistic art glass vase here. It's got these cutouts in it so that there are holes in there, but they are completed. I definitely snatched that up at $9. And right behind it, we do have these beautiful, I love the look of these. Um, it's ornate without being too overdone. Don't worry, the lid is taped on there securely. Uh, I think they're beautiful. I just didn't know. I was uncertain if that would be something to get for resale. This was really interesting. Uh, very cloud-like in appearance. So definitely checking everything else out. Uh, I will say that I didn't spot anything else that I thought that I could get for resale, but hey, you never know. It's definitely worth taking your time. Moving on, this was really cool. It does say that it is a Japanese uh, militia art display. I've never seen something like this before. Now, I'm obviously not going to give this for resale, but gosh darn it, I definitely wanted to capture that on film. It was quite unique. And that said, as I said before, once you capture my interest with one particular item, I definitely am kind of lured in. I want to see what else that you have for offer. We do have, now this looks like it's Tiffin glass. The vendor has it marked as Fenton, uh, the little lion here. I don't know. It could be. I've never seen Fenton use that mark before. Um, I don't know how I feel. It could be Fenton. You're going to have to let me know that in the comments. The sculpts seem exceptionally soft. I know that Fenton does do some soft sculpts, but um, they're typically even softer than that. It was kind of, it was a little muddled almost. So that kind of, I was like, mm, I was unsure on that one. So got a great mid-century little display there. Uh, I don't spot a whole lot of anything else that's going to capture my interest for resale. Got a little Donatella down there. Cute stuff, but a mm, little baby down here in her little carriage. Get me out. <laughs> oh, goodness. And we're right next door. Now, I did spot this beautiful blue. Um, look at that. That decanter there. Could you imagine going to a party and that was what you were getting your drinks out of? Two twenty-five. I said nope. Cambridge. Okay, fancy schmancy. And this gorgeous blue slag candy dish. My goodness, look at that. Doesn't it look like marble? Like a blue marble. It, it was very pretty. I love the finial. I love the clean sculpt on this. It is one of two. That is right. I think it was fifty. There is what I was seeing. So. Pretty to see, but you're going to have to live there. Oh, look at this. We've got a little high -Z display piece. I like that. That's fun. $70. So I, I thought, well, you're going to have to stay there too. But that's still cool to see. I know that there, you know, especially if you're a particular company collector, having those display pieces, it just kind of really helps set your collection off. And it is still made by high -Z, So uh, unusual pieces. And those are harder to get pieces because they weren't really made for sale.
Now, I didn't spot anything else until I spotted this cute little pottery flower frog. It was only $9. I love the brown. I love, of course, the herb tone. So I do pick that one up. And next up, now this looks like it is a royal ducks piece to me. While it is stamped Germany, I do believe that this was kind of like a, um, a knockoff. So I don't believe it is original to it. Uh, the original Royal Ducks piece did have a little bit of color accent to it. And they typically don't use high glaze on their pieces. Uh, we had a little shell balik there. And then we do have this little porcelain toothpick holder. I loved the detail work on this one. Look at how fine that painting is. I love this. I definitely picked it up. I just thought there was something very charming and elegant about it. And I love, again, those earth tones. Okay, we're in the books. I can never get enough books. We're going to take our time. Again, it is all about the subject matter and, of course, condition. Now, some condition issues can be forgiven, provided the subject matter illustrations. They are there. They're hard to get. Um, this one was a little tattered of uh, unfortunately the spine was coming loose to it so now the books that i did spot initially were right down here first up we've got a natural history book and guess what we have another natural history book this one's philosophy so going inside here we can see that this one yeah it's 25 dollars but look at all of the illustration. There's There are over 450 illustrations in here. It does have some condition issues so far as foxing. I think that's something that can easily be overlooked, especially given the fact that it is from 1854, predating, of course, the Civil War. I definitely thought that was a great deal. I did pick that one up. Next up, we've got another book. This one's only at $12. This one is 1871, so still a great antique book. This one does have some illustrations in it, also not 450, but enough to warrant me picking it up at the $12. This one seems to deal a lot with insects and invertebrates, so uh, that was cool to get. I think those were both major scores. Now, we do have some books over here in the plastic baggies. Um, I wanted to look through them. I will say that the vendor... And I can really appreciate this. These were books that had maybe some more substantial condition. So putting in the bags, like you see here, the cover is coming loose. That really does help protect the book. So if somebody goes to pull the book out, they're not ripping the spine off. But unfortunately, the condition issue did hold me off from picking up any of the ones in the baggies. So great idea, though. I really appreciate that. We have moved on into the back here. We've got a little photo album here with a celluloid. There is no clasp on it, and all of the photos are missing. So I do decide to hold off on that one. These beautiful antique uh, kind of general store display cabinets. I love seeing these. Uh, and the vendor obviously has a number of antique books laid out. The prices just simply weren't where I needed them to be. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look around here. I will say that I don't spot a whole lot. We've got a Courier and Ives print here. Of course, those are hand done. Uh, we've got the city of Dayton, Ohio, and it looks like some old, um, I don't know what one would call them, <laughs> certificates of some sort. There's, It's a little sparse in here. It's almost set up like an actual a Victorian room. Now, of course, I do spot some other books, so we want to investigate and check those out. I think those spines are absolutely beautiful on these, uh, but the subject matter just wasn't where I needed it to be. We've moved on now into the final room of the upstairs. It does have more of a primitive early American settler vibe to it. Um, I'm not mad at it. I like it, but mm, it's just typically not where... I find a whole lot of items that we do, as I have said in the past, recommend checking out every area you just simply know, don't know. It only takes that one item to make it worth it. Now, I am very glad that I did decide to go ahead and check things out a little bit further because there was, again, a number of books. And boy, did we find some great books. First off, right here, The Wonders of the Universe. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to be checking that one out. Um, again, looking for that subject matter, not only for uh, display purposes, but people actually do read their antique books. We do have some readers here, but they're pretty rough shaped, so I'm going to hold off on those. Mm. 
don't really see any that are like super amazing. And then I do see this one. Look at that binding on that one. My goodness. I'm going to check them all out here. I decided to check them all out before I started getting up close and personal. I want to check out the little ones here. Little Carol book. That is so charming. All right, guys, let's check out these books a little bit closer. I was praying that this book was going to be uh, like under $100. Not only was it under $100, it was $35. <gasps> this is such a steal, fully illustrated. This is going to deal more with like, again, the wonders of the universe. So a lot of science kind of things, which I think is really cool. I only have the privilege of having one other of these books. So I'm quite, ooh, look at that thing. My goodness. Some kind of toad. I don't want to run into that. Little seahorses there. Uh, but yeah, I only own one other of these. And at $35, that is an amazing steal. Here we've got the literary world. That one wasn't overly exciting. A little bit of coloring there into the front. Naughty child. Naughty, naughty child. And we've got a copyright on this one of 1873. Right after, of course, the Civil War. Things in nature and science. I want to check out are there illustrations? Oh, there sure are. You know we're going to pick this one up too. I love it. I mean, these are just such time capsules and kind of the things that people believed in once upon a time. And, you know, we no longer, we, we kind of scoff at them. And it kind of makes you wonder, what is it that we currently believe in that people 100 years from now are going to scoff at and be like, I can't believe they didn't believe that. These are really cool. Milton Bradley, uh, little cardboard soldiers here, $20 for the set, which was not that bad, especially with the 20% off. But unfortunately, a lot of the soldiers were missing their heads. <laughs> we're going to get past creepy Blair witch child here and make our way down into the basement. Here we are. Now, I will say going through the basement, um, there was some fun stuff to see, but a lot of it, it was more contemporary. There were some vintage things. I didn't spot... A whole lot of the antiques and then there was this side room here um this one was a little bit more flea market style with a lot of contemporary kind of goods but i did spot what appeared to be some vintage items unfortunately they just weren't the kind of vintage items that i'm looking to bring for sale not to say that there's anything wrong with it but again i'm just really looking for that real good that vintage good good right um so again some glassware over here but just eh not where I wanted it to be. But gosh darn it, I'm going to give it the old college try, as they say. And I still didn't find anything. So moving on, we are, of course, back into the main part of the basement. Watch out, there's firearms. Um, don't spot a whole lot. I don't. That's okay. We still got to give it a try. Still got to put forth the effort. Hmm. We're looking. I'm a looking. But I don't spot a whole lot. No, I don't. <laughs> That's okay. Really giving it the chai. So it's kind of like the basement is like that meh kind of stuff. Did spot a book, but mm. guess what? I went back and I got it. All right, guys. That's it. We're going to wrap it up outside alrighty guys well there you have today's shop with me video I had a good time I think we found some good things those books especially I am super excited about that that Royal Saxony vase you know what I am really glad I went back and got that the finish on it is very unique and that is ultimately why I decided to get it um, I'm very pleased with it she's pretty as always, you guys, down in the comments, let me know what your favorite find of the day was or the item you wished I had most picked up. Either works and you know I'd appreciate it. And until next time, guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.